Hey everybody, Jem Schofield here with the C47, and today we're going to be talking about Zeiss Milvis Super Speeds, and in particular in this video, Zooms versus Primes. So let's get started. Many of us are using our zoom lenses as basically variable prime lenses. So for instance, when we're shooting interviews, we might start at one focal length, let's say a 35 millimeter focal length, and then we will, at the time of the next question, change the focal length to a 50, and then we might be at an 85 or somewhere in between. And the advantage to zoom lenses is it gives us that speed of workflow in production. It also gives us the ability to go in between focal lengths if we want to without picking up the camera and physically moving it closer or further away from the subject. So those are some of the key advantages of using zoom lenses on productions. And I'm not suggesting that we take those away from our productions. I'm not going to. But there are some distinct advantages to using prime lenses on our productions. Number one, of course, is image quality. We tend to see better contrast and sharpness in terms of the images that we get. We also have the advantage of them being faster. Most zoom lenses do not go beyond an f2.8. Our Zeiss Milvis Super Speeds, all of these lenses can go to an f1.4. They come in focal lengths of 25 millimeter, 35, 50, and 85, and they're all new lens designs. So there's a huge Milvis family of lenses, which these match with. You can buy them individually or as a set. Now they come in two different lens mounts. We have the ZF, which is for the Nikon F mount, and we also have the ZE, which is the Canon EF mount. These lenses are full frame lenses. So regardless of pretty much any camera system that you'll be using them on, you can use them with confidence because their image circle will fill that sensor size all the way up to full frame and all the way up to 8K resolution. All right, so enough of the stuff about the advantages in terms of primes versus zooms. It's really now time to take a look at some images so we can see what that is like visually. So in this situation, we went to the Evergreen Air and Space Museum. It's kind of this amazing Smithsonian-like museum in the middle of nowhere in Oregon. They actually have the Spruce Goose in the building that we were shooting in for most of the time, and also a separate building, which is the Space Building, which has uh, Titan II and other amazing stuff. So what we're taking a look at here now with this first shot is the zoom lens it is an F4. We are using ND because it was bright in the museum that day. And we're doing that consistently between the zoom and the Milvis super speeds. And again, we're keeping that in F4 because that's the maximum aperture on the zoom lens that we were using. And in comparison, the 35 millimeter Zeiss Milvis super speed. And even though we are effectively at the same focal length and we use the Milvis super speeds as our base in terms of our angle a view or a field of view, it's not going to be identical because of the differences in lens design, but it's pretty close. Now we're looking at the 50 millimeter zoom at an f4, and now we're looking at the Zeiss Milvis Super Speed. And you can see right away the difference in terms of the sharpness and detail in the image, a little bit in terms of the contrast that you're seeing. So there you have it. That's a basic comparison between a stock zoom f4 maximum aperture lens and the Milvis super speeds at that same aperture. But the bigger part of that story, of course, besides the image quality that you are getting from these lenses, are the creative choices that you get when you have lenses that have a much wider aperture when they're wide open. We can use them in low light situations and creatively in terms of that shallow depth of field, we're getting a lot more choices in terms of selective focus. We're going to be taking a look at other image characteristics of these lenses in other videos in this series. So thanks for watching.